Welcome everyone, this is Unstoppable Stiletzi here again with you to show a new Civ preview for the upcoming Age of Empires 3 Wars of Liberty Great War patch. The Civ today will be the Brazilians, and I'm covering them today for a very specific reason. See, the Brazilians have undergone a very radical change to their economic system and the way that they macro. Their unit roster is pretty much the same as you remember them, minus, you know, a couple of bug fixes here and there to their unit skins, and the change of one of their Royal Guard unit names for the conscript. I'm going to go over a match today to show you how this new system will work, how you'll be able to access the Brazilian slaves from the town center from now on, and deciding when to slave trade and maybe when you want to invest in the abolition technology since both undergone some serious changes in the way that you get them. I will be playing this match on a new map, Lake Titicaca. As you know, it's the most elevated or one of the most elevated lakes in the world down in the Andes against the Zulu. Let's see if we can beat the Zulu and if our slave trade booming capabilities are just as good as before if or are they better or worse that's what we're gonna find out today let's get started shall we I'm looking forward to this I love slave trade booming with Brazil I'll be a pretty good judge to see if it works or not I promise you an honorable death. see this here you can't actually train your own slaves anymore. Instead, you're going to be fully reliant on the slave trade at the start to be making your slaves. It won't be until much later if you decide to abolish your slave trade at the very end of the abolition process that you'll actually be able to train slaves. To start, you'll have to instead use the slave trade big bun over here to start sending a group of slaves right away. The way the slave trade itself works is changed a little bit as it's gone back to being a infinite ability yet again that gives you a static number of uh, four slaves for an increase in cost. And also note here it does check your population as well to make sure that you're not going over your population or trying to cheat the system in that regard. One thing I found interesting too is that while it's sending it does show the updated population space up here while it's queuing up. Thought that was pretty good so it could prevent Brazil players from exploiting their economies and militaries by being able to remove the need for houses Okay, it's almost arriving now. The question I think you're really wondering is, how many slave trades should I even get before going to the second age? I did the math in my head a little bit, and it, I think it comes down to this. If you send one slave trade, you effectively get about 11 slaves to work with, go to your home city, ship three more slaves, and you have a pretty modest uh, economy of um, 14 slaves that you can go up with before having to resupply additional slave trades later. So I think the easiest thing to do is would be to go up with just one slave trade and then go for the Confederacy as the first immigrant. So that way we could get a nice silver coin crate to help boost our slave access through the trade. I don't even think we need food. I mean, we could keep a little bit of them on food just to not waste all that hunt meat. But I think the most important resource in the end is going to be the coin. Because the more coin we get, the more slaves we're going to be able to call upon. Just scout around a bit. What native is this? This is a Republiqueta. Neat. 
Now the thing I'm wondering is, is there a way of reaching the opponent around the lake or do you have to use navy? If this is a complete naval map, then uh, at least that gives Brazil some time to slave boom without too much pressure. But then again, they'll have to build navy then, so that'll be interesting to see. I'll try walking around the shoreline of the lake. And seeing if it goes directly to the Zulu Town Center. Yet you have so few. Is something wrong? Uh, I think something's wrong with you, man, because we're gonna get ourselves a serious slave boom going. What is your command? Let me get this Confederate Town Center going. Also, put up the Town Hall. I wonder if it has any real significance anymore for the Civ, since they seem to have the abolition text right here at the town center now is the second big button. Uh, it does, well, it does look like that the town hall was pretty empty, I would say. Or, at the very least, it seems like more or less a generic Latin American town hall now. I'm gonna send in some more slaves to keep our economy booming up and on speed. Let's get some wood going, because we might need some military real soon. Let's get a market as well. If we could get the stone washing technology for the mining early, that would be quite beneficial. Oh wow, Spot already is sending export shipments at us. Jeez, that's pretty painful, you know? He also has a bowman here, so they definitely souped up this AI quite a bit. Even the African AIs seem to be pretty strong and aggressive, it looks like. I'm gonna just move some of these onto the wood. It seems like this first abolition tech will add one slave to the trades, but it will make them about 10% more expensive. I don't know how good that is. I guess early on it doesn't make a huge difference, so Maybe it's worth giving a try, once we get enough food. But it all depends on the spot, though, and how aggressive they're going to be at us. If this spot's going to be real nasty and start rushing us super hard, we might just have to focus on army for a bit, so we can defend. Yeah, I'm just going to send another slave trade, I think. Focus more on defense. I'm also curious how easy it is to acquire these, um slave trades over time as the slave trade becomes more expensive over time. Because remember before the slave trade only had a limited number of iterations. Now the way that the slave trade works is it's again an infinite process you can keep using but each slave trade you do does indeed become more expensive. It's similar to the old war the triple line slave trade and less like the newer Variant. Yeah, I think we're good right now with our economic distribution. We will begin some assault units, I think, for now. I guess one more thing you have to be careful of in age too is making sure you age up at a decent time. As if you don't, you might be left behind in that age without much coin mines left because you're selling out all that coin for the slaves. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make like one more slave trade maybe and call it quits for this age in terms of economy. Yeah, I'll just ma add one more in. Then we can use whatever leftover mining we have nearby to age up and get ourselves a nice plantation going. I think the Machetros will help defend us early on against whatever sort of line units he's doing in archers. Pick up the first chopping upgrade as well. Make sure our ability to get houses is pretty constant, since we'll probably need a lot of those. Uh, do we have any silver mines nearby? Or are we going to have to venture out a bit to get to those? That's what I'm wondering. Hopefully not too far. Because that bot seems pretty active. 
don't want to get rushed by him too hard. Oh, the, here he is. He's right here. Maybe picking this bar was a bad idea. Seems to already be going full in on me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go right down with these assault units. Uh, yeah, I think assault was the way to go. I think. Hmm. Wait a second. That's uh, actually kind of intimidating. I didn't expect this bot to be that persistent early on. Seems like going full machete is really not the answer at this point in the match. Uh, I'll send the fireman in if I have to. Oh, cool, the firemen have their own, uh, own model now. That's nice. I think if we just stay back around the colony, we should be good. Not have too much pressure on us. I'm gonna push in these volunteers. Just cleaning this up, hopefully. I don't like the fact that they have so much HP, though. It makes it a lot, a lot harder to... Yeah, it makes it a lot harder to clean these up. By the fact that he aged up so quick and got a shadow tech on these as a result. Mm. Finally. Yeah, this is definitely more painful than I remember. Uh, I mean, I got another mine, so I guess what I can do is I can send another slave trade in. Yeah. I'll get another slave trade in. Then we can, in the meantime, I'll add in some of the artisanal cannons. That's going to be a little bit more powerful against any more infantry that comes in. Do we have any hunts nearby as well that we can utilize or exploit? Um, let's grab these ones here. I think the goal right now is just aging up soon. So we can get a plantation going and we can really start the turtle a little bit. And let our economy grow up a bit. What is our slave count by now? It's 25. Not the best. Wish we had a little bit more. We're gonna get about 30 once this slave trade arrives. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'll just keep queuing up voluntarios for now. I don't really see this buck going full on packety on us. If that happens, we might have a bit of issues, and I might need a couple pardos for that. Hmm. How much coin do we have left here? So we have another thousand to spend, which is all right. I might just uh, do one more trade. Yeah, we got one more slave trade, so that way we can round it off to thirty-five slaves. I think. I think that way we'll at least have enough resources to work with to get in the capital age, and then we can use the plantation to deal with coin economy after that. I just don't like the fact that that bot is getting such a high score. I don't quite know how big their army is going to be when they come in again. Could be a real serious threat. Frontier Wagon... I mean... To be honest, I think... I don't know. I mean, I would probably go with Germans at this point. I don't really think we need outlaws for this game, so I think... Probably the economic... Immigrant of Germany is probably going to be a little bit more friendly to our strategy. Yeah, I think so. 
Also, we don't have a lot of huntables nearby, so using the shrines in Japan isn't too fruitful either. How we doing in that it, sector? Uh, yeah, let's just keep queuing up the volunteers. Yeah, I don't have volunteer fervor, so I'm not going to try and make too many of those since I won't be able to upgrade them very much. Just enough to keep us defended for now. As far as... Yeah, I guess we're going to have to put these back on the berries for now. Definitely got to keep up on food ego. I'll try sending the first slave act too to see what it does in terms of cost at this stage. Ooh. So he only sent like a couple empty at me. Oh, alright. Well, that was a pretty mild rush. Hopefully it stays that way. I'm just curious to see if it really does add one more slave into the mix. I think economically we're doing fine right now. We just need to get up to the next age and uh, get some serious upgrades going. I'll start sending a farming upgrade now, just so our farming eco is already in good shape when we go up. Yeah, this, these abolition techs take quite a bit of time, though. So if you're looking to get an FF, I would say probably consider this research time before doing it. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Let's make some pardos in the meantime. I'd rather be spending resources on something in case we're attacked than just sit and idle for too long. Alright, let's go up with Germany this time. And what would the next abolition do? It would make slaves 30% faster on both farms and plantations. Now that's actually pretty powerful, but I would imagine you would send that after like you were heading towards your maximum of slaves, I would imagine, so that way it doesn't impact the slave trade accessibility too much. Yeah, I'm going to just get some pardos for now. I don't want to be caught too much off guard if he has any clubmen or yuans in his uh, army when he arrives. I mean, we could get another uh, hacienda right now. I'll have a bit of warning with this house if he's heading in that direction. Good thing about focusing on food eco now is, is that the pardos only cost food. And we can make a bit of a backbone of those for now to get started. Yeah, I'm going to get a plantation with that. I'm also going to put the readout maybe here, so we have both areas covered. Yeah, I think that works fine. Just wait for that to complete. Pardos. Let's send those huevos in. Got a lot of flowing food, may as well. They'll help with infantry issues. I'm surprised they didn't actually change any cards, really. For this patch, it's mostly just this new system for the town center. What happened to the slave trade? The slave trade appears to be gone for now. Um, hmm, that's interesting kind of interesting. So what you have to do now, you have to go up with like the abolition text it looks like. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess from here you just have to start abolitioning these slaves. Yeah, I'll put him on a hunt. 
guess this is good if you're really greedy on eco. Yeah, I don't know why the slave trade sort of stopped after that point. Uh, oh, oh, interesting. Interesting. So it actually comes back when you add houses. That's kind of cool, actually. I didn't realize that they could do that to prevent you from abusing having no pup. <laughs> That's a nice system. Yeah, I like that. So once we hit that amount of coin, I can imagine we can get started on using the plantations again. Hmm. How much we have on the... Uh, I'm just going to queue in some Pardos for now, because you seem to be flowing like a billion food right now. In fact, what you might want to do is, is you might want to actually get some of the chopping done, since you're doing so well in the food department. Diversifying the resources just a little bit. Seems like right now we're a bit stagnant, and all we can really do is just spam Pardos, which... In a realistic game, you don't want to do, because if an opponent sees you doing this, they're just going to start making skirmish or artillery, and then you're kind of in trouble. So you definitely need to make sure when you're playing this new Brazil that you're planning out your coin access. You know, if you know you're not going to be able to access a mine for a while, and you have to go back and do some camping in your base, that you know that you'll be able to get some slave trades after that. Because what... Looky here, we just got two abolition technologies. The one to improve the number of slaves and the other one to improve the farming rate. Now it seems like our slave trades are very, very expensive. And you really have two options, right? You can either go for full abolition, which you might want to do, or you can stick with the slave trade. I think personally, from the current situation, going for full abolition of our slaves is probably going to be very beneficial to us. Because at that rate, we'll actually be able to train the slaves from these resource buildings and be able to take advantage of our large food economy. I'm feeling very fortunate that this bot has decided not to attack us yet. Gives us a bit of time to prepare stuff. Okay, anything we need. I can send my engine home now. That'd be pretty good. That'd be pretty helpful. Yeah, I remember a long time ago, except uh, talking about how the developers want to represent slavery in a way that shows clear pros, clear benefits to abolition in the long run, right? Where they can still represent a slave trade eventually through technologies and different incentives they'll probably want to abolish at some point and not stick with just taking the easy route of just spamming a bunch of villagers. Which, you know, represents history better and it leads to a more interesting economic system where it because if you just had the slave trade with Brazil, all you could, all you would really be able to do is just treat it like the Russians, right? Instead of the Russians having a static cost of three settlers, you would have Brazil with, uh, you know, batches of four or five villagers with an increasing cost, making them feel a little bit too ordinary. But with the abolition aspect in the choices between abolition and slave trading, now you have to finesse the perfect balance based on the map that you're on when if ever you get the abolition going like right now since the mines are basically gone and there's really not a lot of chances to get plantations until now maybe you think about going for abolition sooner 
see, now that I got the third abolition technology, now I can actually start to train these slaves myself from these economic buildings at a very slow rate, similar to the Goa migration for Ethiopia, making them somewhat boomy. And I think at this point, it's safe to say you're better off just avoiding the slave trade altogether, unless you can somehow come up with 1273 coin. And I think probably the way to go is to just queue up both of the mills with slaves, both of the plantations, and then once I hit that that uh, coin threshold for the town center, let's queue up some slaves as well. So that way we're taking full advantage of our economic buildings. Yeah, this is... See, this is kind of cool because... There is a bit of an intermediary period when your booming is so effective from the economic buildings that when you do finally get a bit of coin to spare, you can finally start to add an additional slave trade in to make that villager build limit go up substantially bigger. I think if it was a fight, you might not have the freedom to save up this much coin, you might actually need this coin for conscriptos or for escoltas or montados, you know? Really depends on your opponent and how skilled they are, what build they're doing. But in this case, where I have a lot of freedom, and I know the bot's not going to come to me for a while, I can sit back and safely do some booming work. I think at this point, just focus on economics is probably the way to go. How is our even our build limit doing? Yeah, we seem to be doing relatively well, I think, in our economy. It's be interesting, too, to see what the slave trade will cost after that 1200 cost. Hmm. So now it's 1400 see? It goes up over time. You know, you could even leave it there, or you could, you know, you could do this. You could obviously trade with the market. Send in another one. Well. Giving you even more numbers. And obviously we have this engine hoe if we want to use it. which we might need to do eventually. The cool thing is, is it can help us to get some experience points or some wood if we run out of that for whatever reason. Now, what would be interesting is, is if in the Great War Age, it would let you actually produce oil from it. Because in back when faith was a thing, you know, you had, obviously, you had the ability to get faith from the engine hope, but... Since that's no longer a viable resource in the game, that was removed from here. I'm going to start upgrading some of my units now, in particular the part of, since that seems to be the majority of our military right now. Just so we can have enough stats in case he attacks. Also, I'm going to get a stable. Because it seems like if you're going for a mass of pardos, you're really going to be lacking in the anti-infantry department, which Zulu has a lot more of than shock units. The only shock unit you worry about with Zulu is their clubmen, as well as potentially export costs and Yulins. Alright, so they're both Republicatus. Wanted to see what sort of natives this map has. I like the design, though, of it being like a really large lake. You can either take advantage of with ships, or you can just walk around it with these nice little trade routes along them. Yeah, what happened to our gather? I might double stable now. Oh, this is cool. You can actually see the, um... No, that's for the home city. I was just wondering, how do you know when you're near your um, ship and you really can't tell?
you receive 10 XP for each slave. Hmm. Interesting. I might just go for another slave trade, I think. I'm gonna add another plantation in as well here because it looks like there's a bit of a cliffside here so I won't get flanked over there. Always pay attention to the map features to see if an area might naturally be more walled off so you can plant your buildings down there to gather from. Seems like for right now we're pretty safe from any shock units, we just need something to do with potential infantry threats. For that I'm just going to add some of the Sculptas in and maybe the Cacador Montados as well. Start. Yeah, also I want to start getting my farming upgrades from the mill itself, the Hacienda. I got the ones from the market so far, but... Now we just need the ones from the Hacienda to feel more complete, economically. Yeah, let's send this in. Campana de la Corniniera. Yep, that's a pretty good card to get for Brazil since it effectively gives your Montados counter-infantry rifling an additional 1x multiplier against the heavy infantry. So if he comes in with too much MP or Spearman, we'll definitely be able to deal with those now. I think we'll TC will let us have one more slave trade. Once we put this house up and then we may as well go to abolition from there. You know what, um, may as well just train him. I think we can save our coin for aging up, potentially, if we do that. Yeah, I'm gonna put a TC down here. So we can, um, start adding these abolition techs in. The finishing ones, that is. I, I'm gonna... S do some whipping of the slaves first, though. Yeah, I, I don't mind having my villager HP down a bit, but it certainly would be nice to have some better gathering going. So we can go in for a full attack at some point. I'm gonna go for the, um... You know what? Since, uh... You... It only works with the Immigrant Center anyways now. Let's get an Italian going too. Get some Immigrant Variety. That way we have three different pools of Immigrant units to use. I'm also going to start looking at adding on to that trade route as well and scouting out down here to see if there's any trade route in this direction we can start exploiting. Is there a trade route down? There's another mine. It's good to know. When we're playing this map that we can get additional mining. Hmm. Yeah, there is another trade route. So yeah, there's double trade routes here. Yeah, let's start getting this so we can get ourselves some nice XP. I'm gonna start farming these trading posts right now. So we can get lots and lots of XP. Lots and lots of upgrades as a result. I think we're in good shape to beat him pretty soon. I don't see him coming up with any super big tricks to defeat us. Hmm. 
I'll build another plantation since they're more expensive to make anyways. Put these Italian houses down here. Cool, we got some workers that we can utilize. I'll just keep them on the food. Okay. Start getting this so we can get some better wood chopping and some better plantation working going. We'll start getting some more plantation upgrades as well. The time comes. Let's get stagecoach. I doubt the spot's gonna take advantage of this trade route at all at this point. Doesn't seem to really be building on here too much. Let's get our Gardas the Onra upgrade for the Escoltas and also our, our Heroe Cacadores Montados. We can also start getting our Henriques Pardos. I'll put it in the back so it's safe. You never know if they're gonna come up on you with a giant navy or something. This is the African Civ. Since they. Yeah, they are. Africans don't actually get a really good navy, last I checked. It's really the Latin Americans, the nation states, the Anglophones, and Europeans that get the more modernized ship concepts. I think we're good now to start attacking them. Also get that third uh, chopping upgrade too. Yeah, we're doing good pretty... Yep. Uh, what about now with the abolition? Should we just get the... I think so. Yeah, let's get the slave trade. It makes them 25% cheaper and train in like half the time or even more than that. Cool, that's actually pretty good, because if we're playing like a late game and we're getting raided by constant cavalry, that means that we're actually going to be able to recover our economy very quickly with that final abolition tech. It's definitely something I'm going to keep note of when I'm playing as Brazil going forward. Also notice Royal Guard Conscriptos are now called the... Corlacas, before they are the Eduardos, so that's a new change to keep in mind. It's also nice to see the upgrade for these Montados finally showing on their guard upgrade. Safe to say that I think we've dominated this so far. I don't think we're going to need great war, but we're more than happy to research it if needed. I'm going to get this plantation upgrade next. Yeah, let's get the church going too and get a nice XP trickle. Keeping in mind that Definitive Edition churches and churches in Wars Liberty are now one and the same now. They just trickle XP and train healers. The religion aspect is gone now. What are we getting for Imperial Age? We getting Brummers. Uh, let's get the Confederacy. They have dynamite guns are pretty good. I like the dynamite guns quite a bit. Create our skirmisher class units, I think, with that card. Yeah, he's leaving his supply kind of bare and exposed here, which is never smart.
Towers, corrals. Kind of built everything here. Question is, how big is his army? He hasn't really been attacked. He's got shock units, spearmen, bowmen, impy. Wide variety of things. Now, my question is, does this boy know how to actually make the artillery units or the stars? Or does it just rely on the infantry? So that bite might end up getting a little bit underpowered as the match goes on. Wow, look at that spam. That is nasty. Even though it's a bunch of generic infantry, boy does it do a lot of uh, damage with them. Look at that swarm. That is actually really bad. That's kind of painful to deal with. Look at that swarm. Just keep coming and coming out. Unbelievable. Look at that. That is nasty. Look at that swarm. Unreal. <laughs> Look at that swarm. Still can't believe he's swarming in like that. That's unbelievable. That is a serious swarm of units. And they just keep coming. Lucky thing I have a bill here. I'm gonna build a town center with them. See if we can get up to Great War Rage. Can we get up the Great War Age? Uh, where's our Great War Age button? It seems to be missing. Yeah, I'll definitely report that though, because uh, we definitely don't want that happening when the patch releases. Make keep mental note of that. Uh, developers will also see this match on YouTube, so they'll be able to keep note of that. Hmm. Maybe it's when you get the final abolition tech that it occurs. Maybe. I'll have to have them check that out. Oh, that's kind of serious. We can still be him though without Great Warriors, I think. I'll just go for Sculptus. Just spam Imperial with Sculptus on him. The Imperial Garde de Honors. Yeah, so you can finally train the slaves from the town center once you send that final abolition tech, though. And can you still make them at mills and plantations? Yes, you can. So that's good. That's definitely useful. Now he's just sort of struggling and making little groups of infantry now. Now what I'm curious about is, is if this bud knows how to actually use the spice crates to go up to industrial age. Yeah, that'd be kind of an interesting thing to see. Yeah, let's just queue in some, uh, escoltas here. We could just trade Monopoly too. If we grab this and the other one. Yeah. I think I might just trade Monopoly this boy in case he tries to straggle out anymore. What is impressive though is that a Civ with so many complexities like the Zulu can still function this well and be able to make a constant stream of units. You just need to be able to program in plans to add Artorian and it's golden, I think. I'll get some uh, Zuevos at this location. Finish them off, I think. Yeah, we need one more TP, I think. Stop! 
Sing, sing on. Yeah, I'll just add some more sculptors in. If we have any HP space left, I'll just ship in the other swavers in. Yeah. That should finish them off, I think. Just going full of soap. Oh, uh, see. Oi, constructora. Yep, we're good now, I think. We'll expire him in about five minutes. Sim, vou is vou fazer. Sim. Qual é a sua ordem? Em mar, certo. Qual é a sua ordem? Vou fazer. Vou escutar. Preparado. Vou fazer. Sim, chut. Sim, em marcha. Qual é a sua ordem? Vou isso, vou fazer. Qual é a sua ordem? Pela avante. Sim, sim, vou atacar. Qual é a sua ordem? A luta. Isso, certo. Qual em marcha? Em marcha ao ataque. Sim. Certo. Sim, avante. Estou ao ataque. I am definitely impressed with these AIs sim. that the bull team is doing. Vou isso. I remember when, like, Qual literally, é like, ordem? uh... I don't know, 70% of the bots literally couldn't do anything. I think it was close to 90% of the bots actually, back in the day. Yeah, I just really couldn't even build a house. Now that seems like they can do so many things. Definitely send a shout out to our uh, AI team for Wars of Liberty. They do an insane job doing the work that nobody else wants to do. Because AI programming is definitely painful. I mentioned that in the last uh, tutorial as well. You don't want to be developing AIs. That AI main.xs file, gigantic. And it takes lots and lots of practice to even understand what it's even doing. Yeah, that's the thing about salt. It seems like they take forever to seed stuff. Like if I went Pardos, it probably would be a lot quicker siege, but I wouldn't have a stronger option for this infantry issue. Oh, finally that PC is going down. I'm gonna focus on the Akandas next. I think we should be done with them. Anything else I have to go over? Uh, um, remember that filibusters are now skirmishers and they're no longer a line infantry unit. Remember that um, this technology only works on the colony itself here and it no longer affects the houses anymore. And... Um, these guys got updated graphics and these are also a uh, more skirmisher unit now. So just little footnotes to remember as we're closing off this match. I'm definitely excited to use Brazil in like team games now and you know fi finessing that perfect balance between the trade and the abolition to get super quick early economies with them. Because the thing is, once you hit super late game with Brazil, they get really tough assault units, really tough skirmisher units, and really good uh, line units. So it's really the late game where Brazil starts really rocking. Still making units. Impressive. One more minute to go, way I. What are you gonna? Ooh, just in the nick of time, took that villager up. Thirty-three damage in Imperial Age, not bad. Makes it. I think it's more like a Hajusi. Yeah, I think these are actually immigrant Hajusis. Now that I think about it, because Hajusis have the same sort of multiplier. So yeah, that's what they are now. Is like consulate Hajusis. I think if they're immigrant hajusis though, the filibusters should technically be available in age two. Because hajusis are normally an age two unit and not an age three unit. Will the blood design before the couple of seconds left? 
some more ammo left. Yeah, he wanted to not waste two seconds of his time, it looks like. Now, that was a GG. Fun map. If you like big lake maps, you'll definitely like this. Now, there isn't any sort of uh, whales on it since it's a lake, but there is a lot of fish on here. So, if you want to go Greeks, you want to go with the Portuguese fish boom, definitely a, a map that will accomplish that very good for you. Remember, if you, if you didn't learn anything yet today, that Brazil no longer can train villagers at the start. You have to use the slave trade. And abolition texts are designed to give us gradual improvements over time while also making slave trade more expensive, eventually phasing it out entirely with the last abolition tech. Keep that in mind and you'll know how to macro with Brazil a lot easier. In every other aspect, they're the same sieve you've known for a long time now with the Latin American rework. This was a pretty fun match to do. I learned just as much as you did, I think, playing them. And uh, see you next time. We hopefully will go over... I don't know. If you have any suggestions for sieves you want to see, be my guest. But I think next we should either do United States or Australia. They received some pretty big statistical changes and even some other stuff, too. This was fun doing for you, and after we go over the post game, just like to see how good our commie was. Military. I think that's GG. See you next time for the next tutorial for the Great War Age patch and the new changes that come with it. Signing off now.